Picture this. You're in the prime of your life, full of energy and ambition. You're living your best years, chasing dreams and embracing every adventure that comes your way. But then, out of the blue, a shocking reality hits you. High cholesterol. Wait, what? You see, I thought I had it all figured out. I exercised regularly, ate what I thought was a healthy diet and felt invincible. <clears throat> you done, Michael? But little did I know, my body had a different story to tell. Let me take you to that pivotal moment. Your cholesterol levels are higher than we'd like to see, especially your apolipoprotein B or short ApoB, which is currently the best indicator of your risk for atherosclerosis. Unless you are able to lower it through lifestyle changes, we will have to resort to lipid-lowering medications. A lifelong commitment, I'm afraid. I see you're a bit overwhelmed, Mr. Hoffman. You know what? Let's redo your blood work in a month and see where we are. In the meantime, make some changes to your diet. Frustration washed over me. How could this happen? I was reasonably young, in good shape and ate what I thought was a well-balanced diet. High cholesterol was in my mind something associated with older folks. I had flashbacks of my dad, how he suffered from several strokes and heart attacks at a young age before finally passing away. But this wasn't the time to wallow in self-pity. It was time to take matters into my own hands. So I spent hours digging deep into the mysterious topic of cholesterol and this apple bee. As my training as a doctor carelessly neglected the importance of diet, I dived deep into this topic, consuming hours and hours of YouTube content and reading up on studies. The internet seemed to be very split about this topic. I arrived at the conclusion that the most robust blood marker for atherosclerosis is Apple B. But don't just take my word for it. Here are some publications from people much smarter than me. But most doctors are still stuck on the classic LDL, HDL and total cholesterol. But back to Apple B. It is recommended to have an Apple B below 100 mg per deciliter. Health guru Dr. Peter Attia even goes as far as to recommend 60 mg per deciliter to virtually eliminate the risk of atherosclerosis and heart disease. These were the changes I was going to implement into my diet and daily routine. I reduced my saturated fat intake to only 7% of my total daily calories. I started consuming more monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats from avocados and olive oil. Remember, these also contain some saturated fats, so moderation is key. Catch! I made sure to consume at least 30 grams of dietary fiber per day. Also, I added 2 grams of omega-3 fatty acids, specifically DHA and EPA to my diet. And last but not least, I cut back on sweets. Lipid changes in response to diet happen quickly. Within two weeks, 80% of the maximal effect is observed with no further changes beyond four weeks. So I set a challenge to myself to track all my meals for the next four weeks in the excellent app Chronometer. And so it began. Before we continue, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Chronometer. Just kidding guys, this video isn't sponsored in any way. For people interested in my macros and other stats, you may pause the video now. And of course, no change in diet is complete without exercise.
I just love chocolate and my diet used to have way too much saturated fat. I mean, this bar of chocolate. On some days I would devour this bad boy in five minutes. And trust me, it wasn't the only candy I ate for the day. As I believed that the dose makes a poison, I limited myself to two pieces of chocolate every day. Trust me, it took every ounce of self-control. After four weeks of daily tracking my calories and lipids, it was time for the moment of truth. Would there be a noticeable lowering in my ApoB? Or was it time to start lipid lowering medication? Something I really wanted to avoid. I was quite nervous before receiving the results. Would my efforts pay off? Or would I be left with a defeated heart and a fridge full of leafy greens? Mr. Hoffman, please. You guys will have to wait here. Fantastic news, guys. I just had the appointment with my doctor and I was able to bring down my Apple B from 125 to 90 milligrams per deciliter. This is amazing. I'm very happy about this. It is unbelievable how much is possible with just a few changes to your diet. I think the biggest impact in lowering my Apple B had the maximum of 30 grams of saturated fat that I allowed myself to have. It's like having a budget to spend each day. Similar to my passion for investing in stocks and personal finance. Of course I may spend it on this whole bar of chocolate. But this would mean spending 16 grams or 53% of my daily allowance. That's the equivalent of 400 grams of lean steak or the equivalent of 16 of these jarred chickpeas. Now, you tell me what you prefer. I also love tracking my food intake on chronometer as I thought of it more as a game than an uncomfortable task. I made it a daily challenge to see if I could meet all my caloric, vitamin and mineral goals. I found out I eat way too little vitamin A and E. That's why I incorporated some carrots and some almonds into my daily snacks. The main reason I made this video is to urge each and every one of you, regardless of your age, to prioritize the assessment of your Apple B levels. You might be wondering why I emphasize Apple B over other traditional markers such as LDL, HDL and cholesterol. Stay tuned, a video about this topic is coming out soon. The tricky part is that you don't feel a high Apple B or cholesterol. That's why regular blood work is absolutely vital and you need to adopt a long-term perspective about it. There's a lot you can achieve by making a few simple changes to your diet. Obviously, I'm not an advocate to put lipid-lowering medications into our drinking water. There's a time and place for drugs. But first try it with diet and exercise. You might be surprised what's possible. In the meantime, click here to find out what your morning routine is lacking. Thank you very much for watching and bye bye.